We're in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress 2023, and one of the key themes here at the event is Open RAN. So I'm talking today with Alex Jingson Choi. He is the chairman of the ORAN Alliance and also SVP Group Technology at Deutsche Telekom. Alex, great to see you. Thanks very much for taking time to talk with us today. Um, now, the ORAN Alliance is already more than five years old. I mean, what would you say has been the Alliance's biggest single achievement in that time? So far, we have uh, many um, achievements that we can celebrate. But amongst them, if I highlight the one, the, the, the most important one is the successful delivery of uh, ORAN specification. That including the security uh, specification and test cases. So um, this uh, ORAN specification is already publicly ab available on our website and which became the basic, uh, the, the blueprint the basis blueprint for the, all these ORAN uh, Alliance member companies. For uh, Then they use this uh, specification for their solution, uh, product implementation, and, uh, and bring it to the market. Uh, so many uh, operators uh, you know, uh, are trying, uh, doing their trial and also even the commercializations for both uh, greenfield operator, uh, also brownfield operators. So these are the, uh, the most, uh, um, what can I say, successful uh, achievements. Um, now, the Alliance obviously has many large telco uh, names amongst its members, but there are still many operators that are not involved in the Alliance. Uh, why do you think that is? Do you think there's still a little bit of a split in the industry about the potential of Open RAM? Uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that issues. I mean, in Oran Alliance, so we already had the, have a 32 uh, operators globally. And if you combine the, all the number of the subscribers of these 32 operators, uh, we are talking about more than 5 billion customer bases. So, so I think uh, we, you know, our alliance uh, already have a six net you know, scale uh, for the Oran uh, uh, market. And uh, definitely, you know, Orient Alliance is uh, very much welcome to those uh, operators who are not yet a member of Orient Alliance. So that's uh, something that, uh, you know, <laughs> I have to do <laughs> yeah. 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 to invite more operators to join us. Yeah. And uh, the more operators we have, the better, you know. Well, and, I mean, five years, not really that old and still still a long uh, many years ahead as well for, yeah. for and also there is a, a little bit of perception uh, issues uh, because uh, Oran Alliance uh, you know for those people who are not so familiar with the Oran Alliance uh, they, you know they don't know exactly what's going on in Oran Alliance some people uh, consider it as like a de facto standard bodies and some people uh, look at the Oran Alliance as kind of a you know you know, industry promotion and, and, and some commercialization, supporting uh, associations, something like that. Actually, we have both features and both uh, services, public develop, uh, you know, de facto standard developments and also uh, uh, and make it uh, publicly open so that everyone can access it, download it and use it. But at the same time, unlike uh, traditional uh, standard bodies like uh, 3GPP or IEEE, you know, they are more focusing on the, this uh, standardization activity and also they are more focusing on only those uh, interfaces which require the uh, 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 interoperabilities. Uh, but this is not uh, true, fully true in case of Oran Alliance. Uh, we are doing uh, much more than that. You know, if I just uh, 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 refer to the other wireless uh, industry, for example, uh, Wi-Fi, market. They have uh, IEEE, who is responsible for the standard developments, and also they have a Wi-Fi alliance. And there, they are, their, their job is to, you know, put things together and then, you, you know, based on the, all this uh, standard uh, developed by the IEEE and uh, translated in the, into a more implementable blueprint. And also they are the one who providing all this necessary integration, testing and et cetera, and marketing promotion and training and the industry, they are whole, uh, organizing a lot of industry event. And so, this, so both activities are very much complementary and we need both to be able to win the market. So that, in case of open RAN or RAN, fortunately or unfortunately, we are doing both. It's, just, it's a quite overwhelming, but luckily, uh, we 
have been uh, very closely collaborating with the TIP, you know, telecom infra projects. Yeah. So, you know, believe it or not, I was the founding chairman of TIP. <laughs> so, so I really, you know, they have been uh, very, very doing their job very successfully. And uh, these days uh, we, are, uh, we have been discussing with them how to further uh, uh, strengthen our part strategic partnership so that we can uh, you know, jointly, jointly provide all this necessary uh, support and services and, and, and uh, specification delivery for the whole open open RAN ecosystem. This is a very critical. Yeah, no, and that makes a lot of sense. And I think people would very much welcome that in the industry as well. Um, now, you talked uh, about the specifications uh, already uh, created by the Alliance and the other work that it does. Uh, what would you say is, is the most urgent work that the Alliance is doing right now that can help to accelerate operator engagement with the Open RAN ecosystem in general? Yeah, I mean, we, we are facing a lot of challenges. You know, you can talk about the system integration and interoperability issues. You can talk about TCO. You know, competency, you can talk about vendor diversity, you know, how you manage to deal with uh, many vendors instead of one or two. So this is also challenging. And then last but not least is, uh, yes, there is a new building block, uh, for example, the RIG, RAN Intelligent Controller, and also SMO and etc. And here, you know, this is a, since this is a re quite new, you know, people still, uh, you know, uh, taking some time to understand uh, what does that mean and how we can bring it to the, the real market, how, how to make it more relevant for their, you know, network, you know, build out and management and orchestration and automation. So we, we have uh, many new building blocks, but at the same time, which is, uh, you know, uh, you know, causes some, how can I say, uh, the work, additional work on top of uh, what they are doing and uh, tradition, uh, traditionally. So. And this is exactly what we are uh, driving because uh, the whole, our industry needs uh, innovations, right? So, uh, you know, when you see the implement the innovation, bring it to the innovation into the market, this is a typical, you know, uh, troubles uh, you have to deal with. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And then what Oren Alliance uh, and together with the, you know, other association, for example, TIP, how we can do better and more to, 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 to accelerate the, uh, the, the commercial deployments, not only the trial, but the commercial uh, deployment and achieve the, necess uh, the scale and momentum right. by yeah. not only the uh, greenfield operator. Greenfield operator is uh, more <laughs> straightforward and br brownfield operator is tricky because of the, a lot of additional work and the work because they want, we need to support, uh, integrate uh, the, this ORAN, open RAN system into their existing uh, network, which is a, you know, 2G, 3G, 4G, uh, whatever. So yeah. this is a, it's a additional uh, rework uh, that you have to deal with. So our focus is more on how we can better su uh, support our member company so to make their interoperability test and to end the test uh, easier. And uh, so we are providing, for example, OTIC, uh, Open uh, Testing and Integration Lab. Uh, today, we already have uh, 11 OTICs globally, and uh, we, we're going to use this uh, lab and, uh, you know, as uh, we will let this lab uh, to be used by the member companies, uh, especially the vendor and also service provider to, to, to expedite such kind of a process. And uh, we will uh, make sure we are bringing the all these necessary testing cases, not just the specification, but the testing cases. And also in Oren Alliance, uh, we have a very good um, testing and integration uh, 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 solution uh, players, like, uh, you know, you know, you have, you no know, uh, VRB, Roden Schwartz and Keysight, they're all active member of Oren Alliance. Yeah, I mean, that's, this is a, a critical part of the work that the operators need particularly as well. Now, obviously, there's a lot of talk about open RAN with the, the, the telcos, the large network operators, but what are the prospects for open RAN in the enterprise sector? I mean, is this a potential proving ground for open RAN? Yeah, that's a very good question. And when it comes to the enterprise network or vertical segments, I mean, this is, there are two things. One is uh, ORAN specific, and the other one is more like a 5G specific, because in the end, our ORN, it's uh, our uh, 
our architecture is based on the 3GPP, you know, 5G yeah. RAN. So therefore, they're very interdependent. So uh, if I just talk about the open RAN specific or all RAN specific uh, 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 market opportunity in the enterprise or the vertical, I mean, this, uh, you know, uh, ORAN architecture by design, it's a best fit for those uh, market requirements. For example, the vertical market, they, they, their requirements are very diverse and their use cases are also very diverse and the scale is very diverse and uh, also the coverage requirement is quite different and the performance SLA requirement for is also very different. Right. So everything is just so diverse and so, you know, uh, uh, you know <laughs> different, uh, low extreme low latency, and they sometimes they want a local breakout, uh, like a, you know you they want to have a private UPF, uh, and also uh, they they are um, already mostly they are considering to integrate uh, between the LAN and back into their uh, uh, edge computing right. and, and then do a lot of AI, running a lot of AI machine learning, video, video analytics, and etc. So to meet those uh, diverse requirements, Open RAN by design is very flexible. You can do the multi-vendor mix and match. And so to address, you know, and more uh, uh, match into such kind of a diverse requirement. So, Positioning wise, uh, Oren industry is very well, uh, we have a very in good positions. Okay, excellent. So uh, obviously a lot going on at the Alliance and, and many members are working on different parts of the, the work there. Um, what is next for the Oran Alliance? What's coming next? Yeah. What's the next big step? Yeah, that's all, a good question. Of course, first the thing first, we just <laughs> talked about the urgent task, right? So first thing first, of course, so we, we set some new plan, uh, plan for the future, future directions, which was uh, uh, announced at uh, our event yesterday at uh, you know, this uh, ecosystem briefing session. And uh, so, I mean, you, you can learn, uh, you can pick up something from there. But just to summarize, uh, I can address three things. One is a better alignment with the existing uh, standard bodies, specifically 3GPP. So, so far, uh, you know, I, don't, I didn't see any overlapping yet uh, because uh, what we are doing is very much complementary uh -huh. to what the 3GPP is doing. But going forward, uh, there may be a risk that uh, we start to be overlapping a little bit, especially in the area of uh, network analytics, RAN intelligence, etc. Et et okay. Because this is very important. And, and also the security uh, aspect as well. Uh, so uh, we want to make sure uh, we are well aligned with the uh, 3GPP, making sure we are not duplicating anything at all, okay. and, in, uh, and we continue to supplement and complement each other. The other important uh, topic is, of course, the sustainability, the energy right. efficiency. So we are about to kick off a new focus group only addressing these sustainability issues. Because if you look at the TCO distribution in the, in the, in the operator network, in mobile network, it's mainly, you know, <laughs> RAN is the major portion of the TCO. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, important for the ORAN Alliance to prioritize the this topic and address it and uh, try to bring the, all this necessary additional specification and technology enablers. And more importantly, once again, you know, how how to standardize, how to measure the energy efficiency in the in the RAN system, and and also along with the nest, uh, test specification, etc. So those are the two things. Last but not least is of course it's a next generation, uh, uh, like AKA, you know, 6G. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, because we have to look forward because we have a vision which is the openness and intelligence, open architecture. So this is, we strongly believe this is inevitable. This, this trend is inevitable. It's, it's our North Star. So we also definitely need to, you know, making some effort and considering what uh, 6G should look like, uh, what would be the, you know, key architectural requirement for the 6G and access. So that was the, our third, uh, third topic that I want to share with you today. Okay. Excellent. So uh, lots going on right now and plenty of uh, roadmap ahead for the future. So look forward to catching up 
with you again, Alex, and finding out how things are, are developing later this year and further into the future. But thanks very much for joining us today. Great to Thank see you. Thank you, Ray.